want to get into the bear grass uh, lady. Um, this is our, uh, one of our elders, Bob. My name is Bob Burns. I'm uh, the cultural person for the Naralma people. I'm also the cultural person for the Wicked Education and Cultural Council, which takes care of uh, a large portion of Shasta County. Most of the stuff that you see on this table here today is ceremonial stuff, all except for a few articles. And it's very seldom that it's ever brought out to in, in a gathering like this here because it's, uh, well, it's kind of a, a religious thing that I thought think people would like to see it today because I have never showed any of this stuff at Shane County. Thank you. He's got a bunch of uh, artifacts here. If you want to take a look at those, that's amazing. And some of those obsidian uh, pieces over here. And I've never seen some of those colors, and I know I know our Mother Earth has has many varieties of colors in it. And uh, um, I've seen um, I know the Chalaki put uh, four four colors in their peace pipes, and um, those four colors are um, black. Um, green and red and yellow and in all four directions. I'm going to let um, oh. one of you speak about, about <laughs> what you've got here. I can see how this works now. <laughs> <laughs> well, my name is um, My dear half-size Lyhawk. Um, we brought with us today tools that uh, um, Northern Plains people use um, to create a relationship with some classy spirit. And any questions, we're hoping to be able to share them with you today. Greetings. I'm honored to be here today. My white name is Reed. My Indian name is Lighthawk. And me, equal big honor to be here. <laughs> That's just a little comedy. Anyway, we special we like to specialize in uh, ceremony, specifically Lakota ceremony, like it's a sweat lodge, a sun dance, or those types of things. Uh, again, honored to be here today. Nomasus, my grandmother was from Junction City. The Neuromucks are from Hayford, Nomsus, and there's other different bands of the Wintu people from different areas. Sing Nomsus, that tells you that I'm from Junction City. So if you listen to when somebody says what they are, that kind of designates where they live and where their family's from. There's Noi Palms, and there's several other, other different Wintu names. Let me teach you a, a Wintu word. Chala, or you could say Chalabeskan. Some people say that means thank you. Some people say that means good. So when you say Chalabeska, it's a good day. Thank you. Oh, I have plans. Where are you going to go with it? Are you going to take a walk? We're going to go for. We're going to start out here and talk about some of the neat things here, and then I've been walking around. We're going to. Walk. And then you know, um, sing a song. Oh, well, Elvis. I don't want nobody on there. I don't want nobody walking on there. Let's turn to the east. Wind. Oil. Let's turn to the south. Wind. Nori. Turn to the, the west. Wind. No rim. Let's turn to the. I mean, excuse me. Dumbo. Let's turn to the uh, west. I mean, to the north. Wind. Wave. Oh! Wishy, 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 wishy
young kids, adults, grandmothers. And they talked about how that the massacre took place. Now you can understand a little bit about how I wanted to go through the bridge because I've been told about this, but yet I wasn't allowed to go through. It's kind of like the blackberries, you know? Uh, everybody else was smell smelling them. I didn't smell them at the, when I got back there the second time. But anyway, during the, the massacre, my, my grandmother said, well, she left the story of jumping in the creek, going down the creek, and then took off and went up a draw in, in the hillside and escaped from the massacre. And in so doing, she had went on over into Peanut, over there, and found an asylum with a man named Philpott. There's a campground over here called Philpott Campground. Well, she found an asylum with him. She was seven years old. And being seven years old, you know, I guess a normal child probably wouldn't have been able to survive. You know, but an Indian child, that's a different thing. <laughs> because they're already taught different things about their senses. How to survive. What to look for. How to, how to, uh, to be strong. Well, at that particular time, Philpott kept her for another seven years. And because you belonged, you were taken by a minor back in those days, you could be their property. And because she was kept, taken by Philpott, Philpott kept her safe. And um, he kept her safe, and everybody left her alone. Or thank you for the relationship that I had this year with my own personal ceremony. 
or thanks for bringing me grandchildren. We have, every year you have to be really, really, really careful with prayer ties though. Um, what you put into the little prayer tie um, always happens. It's kind of like um, asking the old ones for a loan. 20 bucks, I need 20 bucks to pay my cell phone bill. My, my cell phone bill, and then God shows up for 20 bucks. It's exactly like that. Except for, you can't like, when you do your prayer ties, you can't think, okay, um, I want it to come this way. I want my package to show just the way I want it to. Because you'll be thinking FedEx is coming, and the UPS guy will show up. So you have to be really careful with your prayer ties. Um, what am I missing? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's. Oh, you can leave them out, uh, out in bushes and trees. Uh, yeah. Um, they can work for you 24 7. Yeah. Um, a lot of people will put together prayer ties to protect their property. Um, they'll sit with the family, and the family will sit in council, and they will um, put the purse together. And then on each of the directions of the property, you'll see a bundle of prayer ties. It's kind of like putting a special little dome over your space saying, this place is sacred. It means more than, not that it means more than your house, but as you come into this space, we have certain rules, we have certain regulations. Does anybody have any questions about prayer ties? <laughs> no. No, but did you put it inside of the prayer tie? Tobacco. Yeah. I do that. I was just... I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, too, what's really interesting about the prayer ties is that um, they're, all, they're all done um, a separate way. Um, the Chumash people um, only use red material. And um, I'm just kind of tell you a little quick story. We have a sister friend of ours who had been diagnosed with cancer. And we sat with uh, Chanuka, the, the medicine pipe. And we had asked all of the old ones and said, she, she was a serious member of our women's group, we call it, when the women get together and talk bad about their mood. It's <laughs> the only fun we can. But, um, so we sit and we did all of these, we, we did the chanumpa and she was very, very happy and she started her chemo and her radiation treatments and we had a huge basket that we had made, huge, huge basket and all of the women sit together and we od on on pieces and pieces and we did all of these great stories. We remembered about all the things we did together, all the beadwork we had done together, all the custom we had done together. And as we created these prayer ties, we put them, we had this huge, great big pile of just red, beautiful prayer ties. And we took them to her, and, and uh, she took that basket with her every time she went for her chemo and her radiation treatments. And she would just put her hands in them, and she'd smell the tobacco, and she'd just love them. And, and um, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> but the thing that's really cool about it was, is traditionally, after you've created um, prayer ties, in order for the old ones to hear your prayer, you would put it into the, pizza, the fire. And the smoke, it would go to the old ones, and they would hear you. And so we told her, it's like, well, you need to put those prayer ties into the smoke. We need to you know, light them up so that he hears the prayers. And she said, I know if I, if I put the prayer ties in the fire, I'll die. And she kept them for about nine, 12, nine years, I think. You know, And they were buried with her. She did eventually get caught up with her. But she was a firm believer. She believed that all of that prayer and all that love and all of those things that we were able to do for her. So they're a pretty powerful unit. It can look like something completely, totally insignificant. But a prayer is probably the most powerful thing that you can give for the people that you care about. Just words, simple words, words of love, words, words of appreciation. I look at my prayer ties as gratitude. This is something I started when my, um, my middle son, um, he went on a mission for the Mormon church to Mexico. And as a mother, I was freaking out. <laughs> I'm thinking at least they didn't go to Hawaii where I'd have to swim to rescue him. Uh, at least with Mexico, I could drive down and say to people like that too. And this is how moms think. I know it's not just me. So I had started this, and every day I was like, please keep him safe, please keep him safe. And I didn't finish, but um, it's it's important every day, every day to put something out somewhere. I gratitude. Oh, did you see the sun come up today? We are body, but our minds uh, represents the So you can come out of the womb reborn from the lodge. I've sweat never lodge. seen a sweat lodge. A sweat lodge is, um, I'm just going to briefly explain the structure, okay? Um, what they do is you, you go, where I'm from, we have to use willows because that's all there is along the river, and they bend really good. So you go and harvest the willows, you put them into the ground, and you bend them in the shape as like a giant igloo, okay? Um, and they, it, the inside symbolizes the roots, 
okay, the, 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 as they, they, they're tied a, a special way. They bend, they bend, and you tie them all together so that it stays all nice and dumb. There's a little tiny hole that you crawl into, because the idea is, is you enter the womb of the mother, and then they take the structure of the lodge, and they cover it with blankets, tons of blankets, tons of blankets, and they cover it with canvas so that you can't see. And um, some Native American tribes believe it's the, it also symbolizes the universe. And I've had people tell me that as they anipi and as they sweat, and that you look up, you can almost see stars. It's that pitch dark black. You can't even see your hand in front of your face. And it's dark for a reason, because there's something that happens to the brain that happens to you when you're in the dark and you're singing and you're saying prayers. It helps you focus, because what it does is it eliminates the ability to see one of those um, senses. So it makes you hear better. And you listen to your heart. Sometimes your heart will be racing so fast, and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to die. You're not going to die. But it's good. I mean, how often do you hear your heartbeat? Never, hardly ever. So the idea is, is they take their, their ribs and they cover them. In the middle of the sweat lodge, there's a, a hole that is dug. It's perfectly round. They call that the spark. And then right straight out the door, all of that um, dirt that was taken from the inside belly of the lodge, it makes a mound. And that is the altar. That's where the bear sits or the buffalo sits or your medicine sits. That's where whoever is pouring the lodge in whatever tribe you're dancing with or preparing to do your ceremony with will have their medicine there. Your doctors will have all of their things there. Then right behind the altar is a huge fire pit where, depending on the person who's doing the lodge, will take a wide variety from four to 200 um, small black lava stones. They only use lava stones because the lava stones have come from the belly of the Earth Mother. They remember the creation stories. They remember when the earth was formed. And so what happened was is that when the earth was being created, the old ones created the earth mother and they put the land and they put the water and the green people. They spit the lava from the center and the belly of the earth mother out onto the land. So we gather up those rocks and we put them back into the fire so they remember the creation story. And then what we do is all of the people sit on the inside of the lodge. Depending on the tribe that you sweat with, some Tribes do not sweat with women, only the man energy. Some sweat lodges, it's only just the women. Some of them, the women will sit on the south and the men will sit on the north. And some of them, they want you to sit together and, and be part of that because, myself personally, I like the energy of both men and, and women energy because it's like the part of the battery, the positive and the negative. And, but at the same time, I have been in lodges with just nothing but women that were more powerful, and the words that are spoken there, because men and women speak different, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Men are from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's a good thing too, though, because men need to be reminded of the female medicine, and women need to be reminded. We have lots of Lakota songs, the love songs, that remind the women that without the half side, without the partner, we're nothing. And we remind our men that without us, he's nothing. And then we have babies. So in the Anipi, all of the people will sit in the lodge depending on how it is put together and who's in charge. Then in will come the stones. They bring in these red hot. They've been baking for hours and hours and hours. They bring in these small lava stones and they put them into the center of the earth. And then they will bring in the mani, the water. And as they bring in the water, um, they close the door. And there is some medicine like this. This is sweet grass. This was given to the plains people to remember their steps. Whenever we do powwows, we always eat strawberries um, before we dance so that we remember to keep our steps sweet, so that we don't remember our bills and we don't remember the fight we had. This is sweet grass. We put this in our lodge so we remember to be sweet with each other, speak kindly to each other in a good way. And to remember that even if you're really, really, really angry with your partner, that he is sweet. Sometimes. And we remember all of the good things that we were given. We never go into the Anipi and talk bad. Think about how often in a daytime do you hear, Man, you look awesome! I don't know when the last time was up in that crap. <laughs> well, I just love you. We don't hear that. We hear, where's my breakfast? Have you done my dishes? And um, have you seen my shoes? <laughs> and my socks are dirty and have stickers. But we're not going to talk about stickers. But so all day long, all day long, it's like, where's this? You got to do this. Oh my gosh, you got to do this. Very rarely do you ever get to take time out for just you. Hardly ever, never, hardly, never, never. But so we set aside the time for the anipping for you to focus on just yourself. 
The songs that are sang are songs of creation, creation songs, because you are the creator of your universe and your world. You can destroy it, we've all destroyed it at some time, or you can create it in a good way. And um, if, you know, if, you want, if you need something like Reed said, it's a place and stuff where you go to the stones, and, and I, I will not lie, I, I will not lie. There are times and moments with some anipi and sweat lodges where I swore I was going to self-combust. I thought if my hair could catch on fire, I know this is the spot. And you learn. You, you, learn, to, you learn to go, whoa, <laughs> can wait. And, and, and sometimes there's so many people in there that you can't move. You're, you're curled up in a little teeny tiny ball. But you listen. You listen to the person across the lodge sobbing uncontrollably because everything in her whole entire world has come to a complete stop. And you stop and you listen and you wait. And you think, I, I understand that story. Oh my gosh. And then you don't think about you anymore. And then when it comes time to sing and the rattle comes up and, and they put more, and you're thinking, oh, please, no more water on the fire. Please, no more stones. Please, no, oh my God, oh, please, no. And then they call for the door. Oh, matako oyasen. And they raise the door. Then what happens? They bring in more stones. <laughs> and you think, I can do this. I can do this. Now, there are some tribes, and a lot of for the women, who believe that if you go outside of the lodge, in between the doors, it's like a miscarriage. So there's a lot of women who will stay. They will stay, and, and they'll stay strong. And the men will go out and flop out on the, on the ground and think, we're going to die. And there's some men I've sweat with, which is one of my biggest pet peeves, like, open up the back. It's like, what, you're going to tear a hole in the universe? I don't think so. You knew what you were getting into when you got in here. You knew this was going to be hot. Hello. Bucking up. It's suffering. It's like I said about the prayer types. It's suffering. But the thing that's so cool about it is you think you're going to die. You think you're going to, you're going to think. And then you listen to somebody talk. And you listen to a song, and you may not even know the words to the song. But you will. Because those stones, as you put the water on the stones, and you hear them talk, Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I run a lodge and stuff, I will have no words. Just listen to the old ones, because they have those old creation stories. And they will help you fill in a blank. There was a story, story, and there was a, and there was a, oh, hey, I filled in the blank with myself. I didn't ask somebody else's advice. I filled it in with me. I got it myself, all by myself. And you'll hear it in songs, and you'll hear it in the way people talk. We had an elder one time, um, he is... What is um, Pro, um, Pro from um, Markle's friend? Anyway, we had this elder. He came and he stayed at our house. We did. Eddie, Eddie Littlecrow. And he's from um, Medford, Oregon. Anyway, he came to stay and everybody, but unamongst um, to him, he had no clue. All of the couples that we were all camping with wanted to kill each other. Stab, stab. I mean, if you had a red hot poker, we were. <laughs> it was bad. Everybody was feuding. Everybody was feuding. Oh, so lots and lots of estrogen and piles of testosterone. So it was like, okay, what are we gonna? He, we all got into this lodge thinking, I don't want to be here. I don't want to sit by you. And he started talking. He t just started talking, and he spoke perfect to everybody's heart. He was connected. He he knew. And he doesn't remember one word he said, except for that every single couple, every single honompa, ever two-legged, real honompa, that was sitting inside that lodge came out a different person. I would, there's no way that you can go through ceremony like this and stay the same. You can't. You cannot. You can't hemleche. You can't go out and sacrifice and suffer for four days with no food and water and not see nothing or feel nothing. You cannot go through a good anipi and burn your skin off and swear you're going to die and stay the same. And then you create relations, what we call matako uyasan. We are all related. We are, like he said, we're related to this concrete. The concrete's related to the earth underneath it, the building. Everything is matako uyasan. Well, we can go on and I don't know, maybe your days. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you for listening. <laughs> and uh, our prayers are with all of us. We're all going to need it. Oh, we'll talk about it.